Hey everyone, Chebim here and welcome back to our AEW Universe mode. We are back with AEW Dark and tonight we have had a promise from Mr. MGF. He has promised to shake the core of AEW in our opening match here tonight. Let's see exactly what MGF's got planned. Wow, it looks like MJF was right then. He's completely rocked the wrestling world. EC3 is here in AEW, fighting alongside MJF and Wardlow here against the local talent. Of course, we have got Ron Johnson, as we probably know by now. We've seen him a few times uh, with the black hair and the yellow and blue tights. We have got uh, Terry King uh, with the blue tights and the blonde hair. And the new man we have not seen as yet in green is Ellis, otherwise known as Ellis D. Good old Ellis D. Um, yeah. <laughs> Had some fun with the names. Uh, Six-man elimination tag. Great opportunity then for EC3 to showcase himself really well here. A victory here would put EC3 and Wardlow into the positive side of the rankings. And it would also allow MJF to remove himself from the negative side as well. Very interesting here. When MJF promises to rock the wrestling world, that's exactly what he does. What a new member of the roster this is going to be for AEW. EC3. Wow. Just completely changes the landscape, doesn't it? Such a strong name to add into our ranking system. Of course, not at the best of times in WWE, but... Former multi-time Impact World Champion. WWE things never really panned out. It was just too much, wasn't it, really? Um, I don't say it was too much. WWE was too much. They signed just so many people. It's a bit like a football team. It's always been the phrase for a lot of people when a football team is mega rich. It's like, why they buy this player, this player, and this player, and this player? But at the end there, you can still put so many players on the pitch at once. And it's the same with wrestling. You can only fit so many people on the card or so many people in your programming. So when they end up signing an extra five or six extra wrestlers and bring them into NXT or put them onto the main roster or whatever, there's just nothing for them to do. And people like EC3 are the ones that suffer for that. And I think that's why they uh, are losing out to a few indie names now to, uh, to AEW. Uh, draping neckbreaker off the apron here by... MJF on Ron Johnson as Terry King trying to catch up Wardlow, but MJF with a boot in the side of the head of Terry King now. MJF with that uh, Saito suplex as well. EC3 working over LSD. There's lots of letters involved in that one. D's back up to his feet. And uh, catches EC3 with that right hand uh, in the side of the face, actually. Pretty brutal. EC3 now twisting the arm of LSD, who... Fights back. Nice jabs right in the face. Wow, we've uh, seen some uh, some good action here from the local talent once again. They impressed, of course, at Fighter Fest. They actually defeated Wardlow and MJF. So this is their chance to get one back here. No. No. Okay, LSD has just eliminated EC3. How are these jobbers doing this? Can anyone explain? Of course, it doesn't matter as long as it's... Uh, it can still be a win here for them. Wardlow now with a pin on Ron Johnson. It's only a two. How is this happening? How does Wardlow powerbomb Ron Johnson? It's only a two. And LSD takes that EC3 for a free count. How does that work? I've set these guys up to fail, yet they keep doing well. This game annoys me. It really does. Neckbreaker there by MJF on Terry King. Boot to the back of the head of Ron Johnson. And it's LSD on his debut, who's um, been very impressive here today. Wardlow catches him, though. Big headbutt taking him down. 
And now it's MJ from Wardlow in the ring taking down Ron Johnson. Still a good chance here for Dynasty to pick up the victory. It might be three on two against them, but they are the much stronger competitors. If they can get one elimination, I feel like this match is going to be theirs. Arm breaker here by MJF. As Wardlow now taking LSD up onto the shoulders, hitting the big F5. There's the pin. One, two. How? How has he kicked out of that? How does this happen? LSD hits one big move on EC3 and the match is done. Wardlow just F5s LSD. A man who is 50 ratings lower. Yes, you heard me right. 50 ratings lower. And can't get the free count. Wardlow just taking the head off of Ron Johnson now. Working over Terry King. I still feel confident here that Dynasty will win this, but... How on earth are these guys surviving? Pin here on Terry King. Still only a two count. I think we're going to need to uh, rely on MJF's armbar, I think, you know. And here we go. Once again, a jackknife powerbomb. And there's an armbar locked in by MJF as well on LSD. LSD taps. We're down to two on two. Okay. I feel better now about myself. MJF now locking in the armbar on Terry King now as well. And Terry King taps. Wow. MJF. MJF out of nowhere in a couple of minutes has made two of his opponents submit. It's gone from 3-2 down to 2-1 up. I'm still not happy with the fact that um, EC3 got eliminated, to be honest. But it doesn't matter. Because if MJF and Wardlow win this, EC3 still gets the winning point, of course. That's the way that it works. LSD not happy about being eliminated. He tapped out. MJF now bringing Ron Johnson back up. Ron fighting him back. Pushing MJF over. Wardlow just stepping back and trying to allow MJF the chance to deal with it himself. Now Wardlow is getting involved. Clubbing blow to the back and a big clothesline to the back of the head as well. Ron Johnson's back up, but Wardlow's having none of it. Up on the shoulders, dumps him down into the F5. Wardlow now dragging him away from the ropes into the pin. Surely this will be the win for Dynasty and EC3. God, that was a scary one, wasn't it? There we go. Team Wardlow pick up the victory. Woo! EC3 picks up a win on his debut as well. Blimey, that was a worry, wasn't it? That really was a worry there for a second. I thought we were going to get done over there again. Um, right, so losses for Ron Johnson, losses for LSD, and losses for Terry King. A win for Wardlow, a win for EC3, and a victory, of course, for MJF. That's a big match for those guys. That brings MJF back up to zero, so he's out of the minuses. And it puts Wardlow and EC3 into the pluses. Both on plus one. Okay. Scary match, but it worked out okay in the end. Big win. It looks like there could be a future for these three here. Wow. Dynasty gets stronger. And here we go then, our next match of the evening. i tell you one thing, Darby Allen needs a win. He is solid bottom of the rankings on his own on minus three, yet to pick up a single victory. I mean, tonight we've niced him here. We're giving him Kenny Starr, making his debut. Fresh from the shabby wrestling training school. And yeah, Darby rock solid bottom, minus three at the moment. Uh, of course, most recently losing at Fighter Fest in a triple threat against Lufa and uh, Michael Nakazawa. Also, he's lost another triple threat uh, against Janela and Angelico. And he lost a Fools Can't Ever match against Jimmy Havoc 
at all in. So it hasn't been uh, the best time so far for Darby Allen. A win here, I think, for him will be imperative. He heads up top with a big splash, but Kenny Starr got his knees up. Darby now dragging Kenny Starr along. Got two more cracking matches here for you tonight. We're going to see Proud and Powerful in action up next. They'll be taking on the Gun Club. And our main event, Kip Sabian, goes one-on-one -on -one against Trent. Should be a fun night. As Darby now clotheslines to the back of Kenny Starr. Brings Kenny back up to his feet. Nice running forearm right into the face. Star avoiding uh, Darby Allen. I got uh, Jimmy Havoc stuck in my head there for a second. And uh, Kenny Star just locking Darby Allen up into a submission now. I mean, the way Darby's luck has been going, I wouldn't surprise me if he taps out here, to be honest. So he's not been doing super well at the moment, has he? Darby taking Kenny Star down. Darby now up on top. What's he planning here? He's going to go... Oh, wow. Kenny Star might have just destroyed him there. Not even a one count, though. So Darby went for what looked like to be a, a Hurricanrana from the top or a jump in head scissors and got caught in the power bomb, but now just... Pulling the neck of Kenny Starr across that top rope. Darby Allen booting the guts. And now over the top into that bomb. There's the pin on Kenny Starr. One, two. Only a two count. Oh. I thought that might be all there, you know. Darby Allen now willing Kenny Starr back up. Darby, you're going to miss it. Get him. Oh, wow. Big forearm. There's the pin. And Darby Allen gets his first win of the universe mode against Kenny Starr. Thank God for that, Darby. You are worrying me down there. Zero wins from four match Oh, zero wins from three matches. Now one win from four. I mean, he still sits bottom alongside Santana, Ortiz, and Colt Cabana. But it's a good win for Darby Allen, and uh, Kenny Starr also agrees the handshake as well, which is nice to see. Good win, Darby. And a good bit of momentum for you, and hopefully that can build forward. And here we go then, Proud and Powerful go up against the Gun Club. First chance to see the Gun Club in this universe mode, of course. We've got Billy Gunn and his son, Austin Gunn. Proud and Powerful currently sitting joint bottom of the rankings alongside the Butcher and the Blade, both on minus two. Uh, basically with two losses from two matches. And I'm sure the Inner Circle will be hoping that Proud and Powerful can lift themselves up a bit here. It's not been great, has it, Real? I forgot to put the tag team point on for Dynasty in the last match. There we go. Dynasty gets a tag team point. Local talent lose a tag team point. I knew I missed something in that last match. Right. Anyway. Yeah, it's nice to see Billy Gunn. It's a really good call for Billy Gunn as well, actually. As Austin Gunn also taking out Ortiz. And uh, Austin Gunn looking pretty good here at the moment. Santana on the outside with Billy Gunn. And Austin Gunn doing really, really well. I mean, if Proud and Powerful were to lose here as well, that might not go down too well with the Inner Circle. The leader, Chris Jericho, will not be happy, I don't think. But it's still early days in this match. Of course, Billy Gunn's superior experience is probably going to help them in this match. But then again... Austin Gunn probably has the least experience, so it probably balances out a little bit. Oh. 
Big close on there by Santana taking down Billy Gunn. As Ortiz now dumping Austin Gunn to the outside. Billy in control of Santana in the middle as Ortiz goes outside to work over Austin. Austin, massive forearm taking Ortiz down. Now Austin sending Ortiz right into the ring post as Billy Gunn now spins Santana round, drops him in that big slam. Oh, it's only a two count, but how close was the gun club there to getting the win? Billy now knee in the side of the head of Santana. Ortiz has got control now of Austin on the outside. Billy though stalking Santana. What the hell? That was a really poor attempt at a Feymauser. Billy now rolling Santana over into the pin. One, two, only a two count as Austin sending Ortiz face first into the row in the apron there. I said before the hardest part of the ring it's solid steel around the outside nice big strikes there by Santana to take down Billy Gunn now Santana taking Billy Gunn up big pile driver wow brutal 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 there Ortiz now DDT on Austin Gunn proud and powerful now taking some control in this match I say they are so desperate for a victory here Ortiz up on the shoulders into the Death Valley driver on Austin Gunn. There's the pin. Billy's down. One, two, and three. And proud and powerful do pick up the victory. Their first win in this season of the Universe Mode. The Gun Club pick up their first loss. See, Austin Gunn not happy at all. He's disappointed. He feels he's let his father down a bit there. I'm sure that's not the way Billy sees it. Well, we can't see Billy at all, so it doesn't really matter too much, does it, really? The Gun Club are on the loser's side here tonight. Also going to get minus one each in the rankings. Whereas Santana and Ortiz take themselves off of joint bottom now, up to minus one. They'll be happy with that. Right, time for our main event tonight, then. Right then, here we go. Main event of the evening time. Should be an interesting one. Both of these guys currently on minus one in the rankings. Uh, Trent with two losses, one win. Kip Sabian with one loss, zero wins. So both currently on minus one. A win here, though, of course, would take the winner up to zero. The loser would go joint bottom alongside Colt Cabana and Darby Allen, as well as Dan Ferguson. But we don't talk about Dan Ferguson. He's one of the jobbers. Bless him. Trent avoiding that takedown there by Kip Sabian. Now into a nice Russian leg. So I think this is what we're going to try and do with Dark a bit more now, is we'll have a couple of um, squash matches. And then also a couple of matches like this are quite nice, just showcasing some talent like this. Um, is going to be pretty fun. I think next week I've got a nice little main event lined up for Dark where Christopher Daniels is going to go one-on-one -on -one against Seema. So really looking forward to that match. That should be a cracker. But in the gut there and now... Okay. Trent taking down... Ooh. Taking down Kip Sabian, sending him neck first into the ropes. Trent sending, well, Kip Sabian sending Trent over the top, shall I say. And Kip bringing Trent back in the hard way. Nice knee right in the face there by Kip Sabian. Trent back up on his feet. Kip sending Trent across and big clothesline. 
Be interesting. I mean, we've seen the debut tonight of EC3, which is absolutely massive. Really exciting to see how that one pans out moving forward. But as one trio is formed, one looks like it's breaking apart. We discussed it the other day. Sean Spears is not happy with the Butcher and the Blade. They were brought in originally to be his sort of henchmen. And they've had two matches so far and been pretty much embarrassed in both of those matches. Lost, of course, to Omega and the Bucks. Also lost to the team of Jericho um, and Hager and Guevara as well at Fighter Fest. So Sean Spears is not happy and has asked Tully Blanchard to have a look at alternatives they could use as henchmen tag team for that group. So it'll be interesting to see what Tully finds. I mean, if uh, someone knows good tag team wrestling, I'm assuming it's Tully. Of course, he's timing the horseman years ago. Should be interesting to see what that's going to be, and maybe we'll find out at Blood and Guts. We've still got two more matches. Well, two more matches. We've still got two episodes before Blood and Guts for you, of course. We've got one more Dynamite. Which will involve the other tag team semi-final match. Dark Order versus the Best Friends. It will also involve an elimination qualifier. Well, two elimination qualifiers, actually. MJF versus Brody Lee, as well as Mox versus a surprise person that Tony Khan has apparently got a hold of as Trent locks in the crunchy. And no, it's a kick out. Then obviously next week we have Dark as well. Um, we're going to have action from Sammy Guevara, Hangman Page, said Seema versus Daniels, um, as well as other stuff as well. Should be pretty fun. There's the pin by Kip Sabian, not even a one count. Wow. That was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Kip now sending Trent off the ropes into a hip toss, taking him down. This could be a massive win here for Kip Sabian if he pulls this one off. And I feel like the tag team of Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc is going to happen at some point as well. Of course, those two guys are good friends. They live together in America. So it'll be interesting how that one pans out as well. Trent there with the elbows into the gut of Kip Sabian. Now dumping him all the way to the outside... Looking for that boot, but Kip fighting back into the dragon screw. I'm starting to get a bit more used to missing this tooth now. I'm not lisping as much, I don't think. I look like her right state, though. I mean, w when it happened in the lockdown, my hair was pretty long as well. So when it happened in the lockdown, I, um, I grew and shaved in a handlebar mustache. I cut my hair into a mohawk and I was missing a tooth. I looked amazing, I must admit. Kip Sabian now with Trent up on the shoulders. Dropping him in that flapjack. And Kip willing Trent back up to his feet. I say this could be one of the biggest victories of Kip Sabian's career if he can pull this off here, you know. Nice DDT of the leg into the mat. Then a boot across the chest as well by Kip Sabian on Trent. Into the pin now. One. Only a one count. Wow. Okay. Oh, freaking K. Trent now taking Kip up once again. Has him hooked. Second crunchy of the match. And surely this time, Trent is going to walk away victorious. No. Kip once again kicks out. Okay. Oh, freaking K. That's a very interesting one, that. Trent brings Kip back up. Couple of forearms. I mean, Trent is more and more taking control. Now, there is a sling blade as well. Trent now dragging Kip along. He's going to head over the top. What's he waiting for here, Trent? He's going to stalk, ready to go. Maybe a phenomenal forearm. Springboard looking for a drop kick. Kip Sabian just slapped him away. Now Kip going for the pin after Trent crashed and burned middle of the ring. Only a one count, though. Big elbows across the chest. And a nice reverse DDT there by Trent. And again, though, 
in with the crunchy, the third crunchy of the match. Surely that's going to be enough. And it is. Trent Beretta picks up the victory here. He goes on to uh, basically zero with two wins, two losses. Kip Sabian picks up his second loss and goes on to minus two. So we refresh the rankings. There we go. Wow, okay. Very interesting. So Kip Sabian now sits joint bottom alongside Darby Allen, Colt Cabana, Sean Spears, Braxton Sutter and Andy Williams as well as, of course, one of our jobbers, Dan Ferguson. Uh, whereas now Trent moves up to zero um, to join the guys in the middle of the pack. Interested. Very interested. Great win here then for Trent in the main event of our AEW Dark Show here. Uh, we've got a great Dynamite coming up for you, as I said already. We've got Best Friends versus Dark Order in a tag team semi-final match. Of course, the winner will go on to face off against Hybrid 2 for the Tag Team Championships. We've got two Elimination Chamber qualifiers, MJF versus Brody Lee and Moxley versus a surprise that Tony Khan has set up. And we'll also see Jimmy Havoc going one-on-one -on -one against Joey Janela. I hope you enjoyed this one. Of course, if you have, slap the like. Of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.